this is a video I actually wanted to make a while ago when I was doing YouTube and posting videos on a more regular basis. Um, but it's been rough, so I'm making the video now. I got diagnosed with PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome about three years ago. I kind of had an idea I had it, but getting diagnosed was a completely different story. Today's video is more on my life with PCOS and what I deal with on a daily basis. So basically I'm just going to be listing the symptoms that I have because of it. And I know that there's going to be more symptoms than what I'm listing, like little minor ones. But I didn't know what they all were until I was diagnosed and I started doing research and talking to other people that have it as well. But I'm always learning about symptoms that are caused by PCOS. These are the symptoms that I have. One of my major ones is the weight gain and difficulty losing weight. Um, that was one of my major giveaways that something was wrong was because I just all of a sudden started gaining a lot of weight and I could not drop it. My doctor did say that it's pretty much 10 times harder for someone with PCOS to lose weight than the average person. And the way that it was explained to me is your body thinks that it needs to hold on to more fat than it actually does. So that's why you gain weight and then that's why it's hard to lose the weight because your body's holding on to it. That's how I was explained the reasoning behind the weight gain for PCOS. Loss of period is another big one and that was another giveaway that something was wrong with me. My periods throughout school were very normal, very regular. They were more on the painful side and on the heavier side but it wasn't really anything that I was concerned about until after I graduated high school when I started having problems with my period and I started getting my period less and less. As of a couple years ago, it was normal, quote unquote normal, for me to get my period only once a year. And then as of like two years ago, I don't get a period at all. So I had to start taking birth control to force periods because I personally am at a very high risk of endometrial cancer because of the fact that I don't get periods. So my doctor has recommended me to force periods minimum four times a year to avoid getting endometrial cancer. And some people don't even have problems with their periods. So it's it just varies person to person. Another huge one that I've always had a problem with and I've always been worried about is fatigue. I am constantly tired no matter how much sleep I get no matter how many naps I take I'm constantly tired some days are more manageable than others and there are some days that are really really bad like I had a really bad day yesterday my eyes were bloodshot and they were completely red it was a rough day yesterday another one of my big ones is migraines I have gotten migraines for years like I got them really bad in high school and my mom even took me to a bunch of doctors I've gotten tests done and no one could figure out why and turns out it's because of my PCOS. I get them so bad that I have to take a higher milligram dosage of pain medication than people typically do. I've had to sit in a really cold shower with a cold towel on my head. I have a one of those pressure caps, like the gel pressure caps that I have on my head. And I get them very frequently. So it's unfortunately a normal thing for my case. I pretty much live off of like acetaminophen and ibuprofen and Tylenol and all those. I do get a lot of hot flashes, especially when I'm out in public. Um, I don't think there's a time going out in public where I don't get a hot flash. And because of that, my grandma actually bought me a little handheld fan to keep in my purse for when I do get hot flashes. Infertility is another really, really big one for me that uh, my husband and I are actually struggling with right now. We have been trying to conceive for about three years now um, and it's been failing. Um, and that also has to do with the loss of period because I don't have to cycle. So it's been a very, very tough thing that I won't get into right now. I might make videos on my infertility journey and just start updating everyone about it. Just to bring awareness on how difficult it actually can be and the reality of it because some people don't really understand the gravity that it holds on people. I was told that I'm three times more likely to miscarry 
and I'm also way more likely to have problems during pregnancy and during labor and delivery. Excessive body hair is another symptom that was another giveaway for me. That is because I have higher testosterone than what women are supposed to have. So I have to shave my upper lip, I have to shave my chin, I get excessive like dark thick body hair on the back of my thighs. So I have to do more shaving and waxing and things like that. And it's not like a huge deal because I have a mild case of it, but it is very annoying and inconvenient and can affect my mental health and my self-esteem a lot. Some people don't get the extra body hair growth. Other people get it really bad. They get it worse than I do. Mood swings are another huge thing. Um, a lot of people with PCOS deal with this. It is kind of hard for me to clock what mine are from because I also have bipolar type 2 but that is a symptom that I do have, and it could be both my PCOS and my bipolar just double whammying me, but who knows. Another very common symptom is hair loss. I do have a problem with hair loss there for a long time. My hair was just falling out. Recently, it's been better and my hair has been getting a little bit thicker, but that is a very normal symptom that I also deal with. I already have diagnosed depression and anxiety, but PCOS can increase it and make it worse. Pelvic pain was another giveaway for me when I was in high school because it wouldn't be during my period. It would be just randomly throughout the day during times that I'm not even supposed to feel pain. I'm not supposed to be cramping or anything. And I do get cramps and pelvic pain just randomly. One of the huge ways to actually tell if someone has PCOS is ovarian cysts. I do have ovarian cysts and they are your eggs in your uterus. They are not growing and they create like a grapevine type cluster on the inside of your ovaries. So this is, I guess, a diagram that I was shown when I was first diagnosed. This is a normal ovary and see there's different sizes of eggs where the eggs are mature and they're getting ready to drop. There's smaller eggs that aren't mature yet, so you can see that. This is an ovary with PCOS where no eggs are maturing and they are attached to the ovary wall like a grapevine. And this is what creates the cysts. I also do have cysts on my cervix as well. My doctor says that it's normal for even for people without PCOS, but I've never talked to anyone that has cysts on their cervix. But that's another type of cyst that I have either regarding PCOS or not. Acne is another common symptom. I kind of deal with it, kind of not, but acne can be caused because of hormones. So that kind of goes hand in hand with the hormone disorder. Joint pain is a very huge one. I do have problems with my knees and my back anyways. So the joint pain from PCOS makes it a little bit worse. It's kind of one of those things where I've learned to deal with it. I've kind of adapted to it. And another thing where I'm taking pain meds for, or I use a heating pad or I use an ice pack and it doesn't get too bad, thankfully, except for my back. My back can get really bad, but that's because of a car accident and a roller coaster accident that I was in. So that is besides the point of PCOS, but I get problems in my elbows, I get problems in my knees, I get problems in my shoulders, like I get problems everywhere. A really bad symptom that I have is nausea. I am nauseous so often, and sometimes it does lead to me vomiting. Before I got diagnosed with PCOS, I actually went to the doctor because of how nauseous I was and this was like a streak of nausea like I was getting nauseous every day for like two weeks and I had no clue why so I went to the doctor he ran some tests and they were pretty much like I don't know like take anti-nausea meds like that was it that's all they did um and now I thankfully have a prescription for Zofran so that helps really well but being nauseous very frequently is not a fun time. This one kind of goes with the joint pain is body pain. I my I just get sore. My body just gets sore. That's pretty much the only way to explain it. Another symptom that I get a lot is cravings. I will crave sweets. I will crave raisin canes. I will crave... The other day I was craving a peanut butter pickle sandwich, which are so good by the way. So cravings aren't 
like a horrible symptom, but they're more so annoying. The bloat that you get with PCOS, ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's, it's, it's annoying. I also get an aversion to food where there'll be times where I'm really hungry, but the thought of food makes me want to vomit. I can't eat anything. So my safe food for when I'm having food aversions are pretzels and saltine crackers. Those are pretty much the only thing that don't make me want to vomit when I'm thinking about food. And that one's really annoying because I already have a very weird and sensitive relationship with food. So that one doesn't make it any easier, unfortunately. One that I actually just learned about today is that PCOS can make you be more sensitive to caffeine and alcohol, which makes sense because I can take a few sips of alcohol and my entire face turns red and I'm hot, like I'm very overheated. So that kind of just made sense to me when I found that out. I'm also at a higher risk of getting diabetes, which I actually have the complete opposite. I have hypoglycemia, which is still scary because I have to be careful with my blood sugar and it can turn into diabetes at any point. So I have to be very careful, but I do get tests and blood work done and so far I'm still in the clear, so that's good. I'm also at a higher risk for high blood pressure. It's future Bailey. Um, I just wanted to add in here that I know I'm being very lighthearted in this video and I'm smiling and laughing, but it is actually a very serious disorder and it's not fun to have and it does have some very serious mental and physical strains. It's mentally and physically exhausting. It is not a fun thing to have but I'm smiling and laughing because that's kind of the way that you have to cope with it because you don't have a choice. So I don't want you to think that it's not as serious as it is. There are other things that you have to be careful with with PCOS, like you're more at risk for. But the frustrating thing about that is there's actually not a crazy amount of research done on PCOS. Like scientists don't really do a lot of research on it and that makes it so doctors don't know too much. So the only real way for people with PCOS to learn about it is to talk to other people about PCOS and kind of match up symptoms and things and think about the fact that, oh yeah, this can be affected from hormones and this is a hormone disorder. So they kind of go hand in hand. My best advice would be to join PCOS groups like on Facebook. That's where I have learned a lot about the diagnosis. I've learned way more than what the doctor has told me. And then that's also where you can see symptoms and go, oh, hey, so that is not actually normal and something is wrong, especially if you have a suspicion that you have PCOS, but you don't have that diagnosis. And if you have a suspicion, join the PCOS groups anyways, because they will give you a lot of helpful information. There's a lot that will let you in, even if you think that you have it. And you can ask a bunch of questions. You can ask how it works to get diagnosed. You can ask about everybody's symptoms, what differs between them, because everyone's body is different. I unfortunately have a really bad case of it. Some people have PCOS and they don't have any symptoms. So you never know, just make sure that you listen to your body. I will soon be making a video on how I got diagnosed with PCOS. It wasn't something that I was asking to be tested for, even though I had a suspicion that I had it. My experience getting diagnosed with PCOS is very different than other people because most people have to end up advocating for themselves to get this test done. And a lot of doctors are like, no, you're fine. You don't need that test. And it takes a lot of haggling with their doctor in order to get this test done. And I fortunately didn't have that experience, so I will explain how I got diagnosed, but make sure you advocate for yourself. You know your body the best, not the doctor. All right, everyone, that is all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight if you suspect you have this disorder. I do plan on talking about this more on my channel since there's not a lot of research on it and not a lot of people know about it. So stick around if you want to hear more about that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.